The space race is expected to pick up speed in the coming year. Morgan Brennan has the playbook on the final investing frontier. 2019 was another year of firsts. As SpaceX started deploying its satellite constellation, Blue Origin teamed with Space Stalwarts as a prospective prime contractor, and Virgin Galactic became the first of the commercial space startups to go public. 2020 will be the year commercial space emerges from science circles and policy meetings to become a Main Street and Wall Street story. First, a new era of human space flight. Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin will begin flying paying passengers to the edge of space, charging hundreds of thousands in the long-awaited advent of space tourism. And SpaceX and Boeing will finally carry Americans to orbit from U.S. soil. Lift off. And then, with NASA's blessing, start selling rides to private astronauts. Second, more public-private partnerships. As the Artemis program looks to send Americans back to the moon and with limited resources, NASA will share more risk with companies, spurring spacecraft development to lease services. And public-private partnerships will extend to the military as well as the Defense Department stands up the Space Force to better secure the final frontier. Third, space busts. More companies will find funding, including from VCs and other investors, but with hundreds now competing, more will also fail, especially in crowded areas of the market like small rockets and small satellites. And speaking of those small satellites, one of the first things that's on tap in 2020, more strides toward mega constellations. SpaceX is currently targeting three missions in January alone to launch hundreds more Starlink broadband satellites into low Earth orbit, putting Elon Musk's space company well on its way to being able to begin offering Internet access. SpaceX isn't alone either. SoftBank-backed uh, OneWeb is also expected to begin monthly launches early next year with a goal of more than 600 satellites in orbit, potentially by the end of 2020. Just recently, also, we got more details about Amazon's project Kuiper, which will set up operations in Redmond, Washington, this upcoming year as well. It's going to be a big one, I think, for space. Guys? You are a smart one, aren't you, uh, Morgan? It's taken out this. Uh, I try. No, it's taken out this territory. <laughs> what What's going to happen in the next ten years in, in terms of this beat? It's going. It, I don't know. No, too many beats are going to have more developments and, and and more sizzle and 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 excitement and and now actual financial implications. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, I, I mean, I may be partial, but I happen to agree with you. I've said it before, and I'm certainly not alone. This is the type of comment I've heard from some of those very same billionaires who have helped fuel and fund uh, this new commercial space race, if you will. And that's that they see this, they see the space sector basically as the next Internet. So it's kind of interesting that you're seeing in some ways this full circle. Uh, I just mentioned those broadband satellite constellations that are going to start you know, going into orbit this year by the thousands, hundreds and thousands. Um, that was the type of thing that folks like Bill Gates back in the late 1990s were hoping to do. It didn't work then. But now as costs have come down, it's poised to work today. So you're going to see a lot more money come into this space. And I think when you see human spaceflight actually happen, which could be next year, that's going to bring even more investors to yeah. it as well. Well, I hope, you know, be careful what you wish for. You think you're pretty smart. You're going to be strapped in on one of those things as the first CNBC person to go up there. So. I'm not scared. I'll do it. <laughs> you will? Oh, okay. Morgan. Better you, you than us. You can join me. Better, no, be no, no. better you than us. Okay, no. I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs>